we've looked now at just a very small amount of what we can do with the cover tool or sorry the fill stitch tool so let's take another little look at something else we can do with the tool so I'm going to go back into normal and I'm going to delete that shape and pick the tool up again and this time I'm going to click on motif and a whole new drop-down menu of possible stitches appears. At the top you will see you've got user defined. Now, in Embird you have a motif creator as well as a fill stitch creator but at the moment I just want to deal with fill stitches so we'll look at motif 2 and up here you'll see it's got a density of 16 that's 1.6 millimeters I think I can't remember now offhand you move the decimal point anyway and that gives you what the density actually is you don't need to worry about your pull comp it's such a loose stitch so I'm just going to make a very quick shape and I'm going to be very idle again and I'm going to go to shapes and say give me a 16 element shape only this time I'm not going to hold my control key cut down I'm going to make an oval not a very good one but nevertheless it's still an oval and then right click into it and tell it to elements and there's my node there and it's got a fill angle of zero so now I tell it generate stitches and there is my motif 2 ensconced inside of an oval but if I go into simulated stitch mode and we play that back none of these stitches are locking into the previous stitches so you can't use it for freestanding lace which is a mistake that quite a few users make if you want to do freestanding lace you've got to do the grid okay there's your shape so now let's see what we can do with this shape edit and we've got 16 points now I can pull it out at one end I can pull the next one out I can tuck it up a bit maybe even elongate that one a bit move this down there move that one out move that one out let's just move this one in a bit more and there we have if you like the start of a 
fish. Let's give it a little fin. I'm going to right click on that node and tell it insert. Pull that one over, lift that one out. Pull this one down a bit. <laughs> I love it when it does that. Click on this one and tell it insert. It will always insert the stitch behind the one that you've clicked on, if you've clicked on the right one, that is. And we'll give them a bottom fin. And because he is a bit fishy, let's go and look at a different motif. And see what we've got here. There we go, fish scales. Only this time, I'm going to decrease the scale. Scale. And we'll go for 75%. That shortens the length of your stitch by 25% until it generates stitches. And there we've got a scaly fish. But perhaps you don't like it with the scales running in that direction. So I just tap the face of my clock, roughly where I think I want the, the fill angle, and then tell it generate stitches. Thank you. Took your own sweet time, didn't you? And then I can come back over here Click on the node, go up to shape, until it just gives me a four element shape. And drag an eye. Only I want that filled with a plain fill. I'll give that a density of 4.5. Tell that OK. Come back over here elements generate and alter the color of his eye and to do that I drag a color down from the windows color blocks I hold down my left mouse key and I drop it over the one I want to change the color now if I want to change my fish to a different color I pick a color Let's make him purple. And I drag a color down. So let's take a little look at that in 3D. There he is. But you'll notice there's little lumps missing. And that's not very attractive. You don't see that in normal's view. So what can I do? I can highlight that. I can go to, I think it's transform, it's a long time since I've done this, create, no it has to be in convert, create outline from fill, now if I go into 3D, you can see there's a solid outline around it. But I want to change the type of stitch. So I'm going to tell that, make that, well let's make it sketch. I happen to like sketch. Quite a lot of people don't. Generate stitches. There we go. And then I want to move this outline to 
under my fill shape. So I right click on it, I keep my right mouse key down and I move it up one. Then I release my right key and I say insert before and now it will stitch the fill then the outline. And if I want to put an outline around the eye I just click on the eye, I go to convert and I tell it create outline from fill I right click on it, go to parameters and tell it I want to sketch around that as well after all his eye is as important as his body and now I have a run line stitch in sketch which is a wee bit like the back stitch in Janome's MBX around the eye and another one around the body and a scaly fill but I don't like the eye being so solid so I click on the eye I come over to carve one two click into it tell it generate stitches and now I've given a little bit of interest to the eye but I'm not certain that that carve is in the right position so I can highlight that I can then come down to the parts area of my right hand menu and I can select my carve line and I can move my carve line and I only learnt this recently by holding down my ALT key and using my directional arrows to move it over to the center and then tell that generate stitches and did you see how it jumped over to the position that I asked it to so now we've got a fishy eyeball with an outline and a fish body all created with the fill tool shape moving a couple of nodes around inserting a few nodes choosing a motif fill and then using the shape again with only four elements to create the eye with the fill tool again but a simple fill and the carve function okay now there are hundreds of other things that I can do with the program but I want you to explore what's available to you oh and don't forget I rescaled the size of my stitches by using the scale factor in parameters and I took it from a hundred percent down to 75 because if I look at this in one-to-one -one, that's the actual size of my fish and if these scales were too big they'd look a wee bit lost so now you've looked at a little bit more using the fill tool I'm going to delete these now hit the delete key on my keyboard and let's go and look at laying the nodes now I use a two millimeter grid 
I've got the curve line selected. I'm going to use a solid fill, so I want my pull compensation up to at least 0.3. You may find when you stitch it out, it needs to be a bit more, or you need to tweak your nodes. And I want my density to be around 4.3. So I pop that in. Then I want to tell it that I want a 2.8. No, I want 2.5. That's the spacing between the rows. I like a stitch length of 2.8. and 2.5 OK and this time I want a wave effect and I want that wave effect to be Thirty-four percent on both sides of the center line. You can make a sort of S shape if you want. Now when you use wave, you need to understand how it works. And it works with your fill angle. So if I leave it at zero, whatever shape I make, my wave will be there because it's on a zero fill. Now, the reason I said earlier that I was using a 2 millimeter grid is that when people are following a graphic and they want to make certain that it's absolutely accurate, they go that little bit too far with their node laying. Now I've picked my magnifying glass up and I've also got my tool. So to drop my magnifying glass I have to pick the second icon down. It's the one below the selection arrow. And I click on that and that gives me back my tool. So somebody's following a graphic and they think they've got to lay nodes really frequently around their shape. No. That's exactly the opposite of what you must do. So I'm going to pick my tool up again and I think we'll make just for the sake of speed something like a flower. Then you manipulate your curved nodes. And you want your shapes to be nice, so just move your curved nodes around a little bit until you've got the type of effect you want. Oh, maybe we'll just make rabbit ears or a duck bill. And I never try to lay my last node over my first node. I always slide it over. There is a command to do it. It never behaves for me. It always misbehaves. And you just then move your nodes, your circular nodes, if you find your line isn't smooth enough then you can insert an extra node and you insert the extra node by 
choosing an area where you want it to be and instantly a little arrow appears to show you the direction. You right click and you tell it insert and it's now inserted another node here. So you can follow intricate shapes without laying far too many nodes. If you lay too many nodes you force th the program to make needle penetrations where it really didn't want to. So I'm going to tell that finish object and then parameters because I lost my parameters because I showed you what happened. Density 4.5 OK Underlay 2.5 it doesn't give you a 2.5 automatically so you have to type it in you can set all these in the defaults but I'm not going to cover the defaults today I just want to show you that it is possible to do things in this program that you can do in just about any other program and then bring this wave effect up to 34. And if you shoot too far, it doesn't matter. You just left click to continue up, right click to drop it down one step at a time, and then tell that generate stitches. Now, it's not a very smooth curve. So I go back into parameters and I tell that the scale and I actually want scale down to 50%. Short stitches give you a better curve. So let's just look at that in 3D and I've only one real bear with Embird and that is it doesn't give you a very good realistic view. There's my one-to-one -one shape. It looks a wee bit like one of those bouncy toy things we had back in the 70s. I forget what they used to call them, space hoppers? Anyway, In the next video, we'll look at, I think, the run line tool. It's a much maligned tool. It's ignored. People just don't seem to understand how versatile it is and how important it is. So I'll see you in the next video.